Welcome to Multiline Designs. Today I'll show you how to get ePlan working with SQL Server Express. For those of you that are brand new to this topic, ePlan requires use of a third-party database application to manage the data that will be used in your ePlan designs. I discussed this topic in detail in my previous video, using ePlan with Microsoft Access. If you have any questions about what this data is, please take a moment to watch the previous video. SQL Server can be a bit intimidating for the first time user, but it's simply just another application that needs to be installed. When I mention SQL in the context of ePlan, I mean specifically the Microsoft product SQL Server and its variants. Microsoft has several different versions of this product, but I'll only discuss two today. SQL Server and SQL Server Express. SQL Server is designed to install on a company server and is a licensed product. If you work in a company with an IT department, then SQL Server may already be in use. ePlan works great with SQL Server. It's really the best choice for large design teams or teams who are separated geographically. SQL Server Express is often installed as a standalone application on a workstation. SQL Express is fully approved for use with ePlan and can support databases of up to 10 gigabytes in size, which for an ePlan database would be absolutely humongous. If you need a bit more explanation, here's a diagram to illustrate the concept. Choose SQL Server Express to get ePlan up and running for standalone use. Choose SQL Server if you have access to a server or if you need to share your data amongst a team or if you need to support a team that is geographically separated. Now I have to mention that I've seen SQL Server Express installed and working on a Windows file server supporting a small team. Now I don't know if that's a recommended practice, so in this video I will install and configure SQL Server Express on my local PC. Okay, let's review. We'll be installing SQL Server Express. SQL Server Express is typically used for standalone operation. And let's be clear here. What I mean is, if we put a database application on your PC and then turn that PC off, there will be no sharing of your data, all right? Uh, I'll also be installing SQL Express 2017. ePlan officially recommends SQL uh, Express 2012 through 2017. I just uh, installed 2017 before I shot this video, and I can tell you it was much easier to install than the older versions, so I'm just saying, do whatever you like. Uh, I'll also install uh, the Express Management uh, Tools. Uh, I suggest you do as well. This application will give you the tools to access your database and perform in important maintenance activities like adding or deleting databases, although we can add databases right through ePlan. You'll also need admin rights on your PC to get this installed and set up, but after that you'll just need a normal Windows user account. I'll install SQL Express on my PC under my admin account. I'll then configure SQL Express to allow connections by any local Windows user account. Okay, rather than spend a bunch of time showing you how to install SQL Server Express, uh, I'm just going to point you to YouTube and have you look up uh, Install SQL Server Express, and you can pick from probably a hundred uh, videos on the exact topic that are already made. So. I'm not a big fan of reinventing the wheel, if at all possible. So uh, I can recommend, and I will put the link to this particular video in the comments of mine. Uh, this uh, particular video here by Zhi Zhen that uh, goes right through the process very clearly for uh, version 2017 uh, that I'd highly recommend. That's what I used. Uh, it was very simple and it worked great. So go ahead and install SQL Server Express and then follow his recommendation about halfway through to install the uh, studio management tools for SQL Server Express. And uh, I'll resume the video uh, once that uh, software is installed. Okay, my software's installed, so let's go find and launch SQL Server Management Studio Tools. Once we launch it, we'll need to find out uh, what a server name is, and we'll also need permissions uh, uh, to set up permissions for the local Windows users. So you'll need admin rights to get into this, because we want to set it up 
by changing the permissions, we'll need admin rights to do that. So I'm going to right click on here and select run as administrator. I'm going to type in my magic number. Give it a moment. Okay, when it first pops up, this uh, dialog right here has our server name right in it. And it's already highlighted. So go ahead and copy paste that and save it in a you know a note document or somewhere where we can retrieve it in a few moments when we go back into ePlan. All right, so I'm going to uh, note in here that we're using Windows authentication. Uh, this will allow any user that's logged into this local computer here to be able to connect to this uh, server that's going to be running on the admin side. All right, so I'm currently you know logged in as an administrator. So, okay, so I'm going to go in here and we can open this and see that we don't currently have any uh, databases. Uh, I'm going to go to the security tab and go to the logins folder. And this uh, displays all the different users that we uh, uh, have available to access this. Right now, I'm going to look for, uh, this is me right now, my local user. I'm going to look for this one called built-in users. It's actually a user group. And it's a, a user group specific to this PC. So any user that creates an account and has a login has Windows authentication on this machine, they'll be able to connect. So I'm going to right click on this and select properties. All right. And I'm going to open up this dialog and I'm going to look for server roles. All right. And by default, we'll have a public, uh, uh, rights to this uh, but what we really want is we want DB creator you can also select sysadmin down here but that uh, that basically gives you God mode so we don't really need that for uh, using ePlan we just need uh, DB creation uh, maybe down the road uh, at some point you'll have one master data file and you don't want people creating their own stuff uh, you know, maybe they can use access for their own stuff, but whatever the one master company file, you would want to take this ability away so they can only connect to it, but leave that up to your IT team. All right. So, uh, with DB creator selected, I'm going to select okay. And we're basically done. I'll minimize this for the moment, um, so that we can come back to it. Um, now go down and launch ePlan, uh, ePlan's loaded. I'm going to go to Utilities, uh, Parts, Management, and select that. And this should bring up my uh, existing demo uh, database that's connected via e uh, Access. I'll go to my Extras tab and select Settings. And when I bring this up, I'll see that I'm currently connected to an Access database. This is the demo database that ships with ePlan version 2.8. So what we want to do is change our connection from access to a SQL server. So I'm going to go get the name of my server because it's going to ask us for it in a moment here. Okay. And I'm going to select the new button on the far right. Uh, when I do, it's going to bring up this generate uh, SQL server database uh, dialog. So we'll be creating a new database. This is the name of the server. And I'm going to call it for this example. So we know what it is. ESS part zero one. You can call it like ePlan demo parts or something, whatever makes sense to you. I'm going to just uh, name it ESS part zero zero one, just so that they're both identical. So I'll know exactly what they are. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll know that you're successful uh, in part when you can look in this uh, dialog box and see the name of your server followed by the name of your database. All right. You can have more than one database. You can have schemes. Uh, I like to name my, <clears throat> my schemes after the company name that I'm working for, or maybe the project I'm working for. So that if company X has, you know, an access parts database and company Y has a SQL server, database I can switch between them maybe they'll provide me with a database it gets you know you can get right in the weeds real quick with that stuff but um, down the road uh, so I'm connected I'm going to select OK all right and when I do you'll notice that my data tabs have been wiped out that's because we have a, a database with no data in it 
All right. So if I go to like my list view tab, I'll see that it's there's no parts in it. So we can uh, load parts. We'll take a moment. I'll show you how to do that. Well, uh, when ePlan ships, it gives you both a fully loaded access database and an XML file. So we're going to go and import the XML file to rebuild this database. I'm going to select a file type for my import will be XML. I'll click on this file type uh, pull down and I'll select XML out of the list. Uh, I'll double check that I'm pulling this from the right location. So that's my <clears throat> system master data default location. And here's my parts XML. When I looked previously, uh, this has the same uh, almost identical time and creation date as the access parts database. So I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. And it, to be quite honest with you, I don't believe it really matters. So let's go ahead and select open and we can add new records only. We can update existing records only, or we can update existing records and add new ones, right? ePlan also gives you the ability to create in here a, uh, a mask so that you can, if you want to import, uh, you know, descriptions or, you know, in-house part numbers or things like that, you can create masks to protect other data so that they don't get overwritten. You know, if you're downloading parts from the data portal, for example, but you have already a certain way of naming, you know, your, your parts, uh, you don't want someone to go ahead and download a part from the data portal and destroy your, you know, your, your description that's synchronized with your ERP system or something. All right, so I'm gonna select update existing records and add new ones. In this case, everything's new, so it would either one of these would work. And I'll select OK, and it will begin the import process. I'll take a few seconds for that to update the database. Okay, it's, it's updating the search index, which is good. Sometimes you might do a big update like this and you won't see any data initially. There is a tool so in here so you can manually update the search index. Like here's here's my data, All right? I switch back, it still persists right here. If you don't see anything, just go down here and update your search index or alternately you can close out and then bring it back up. And by opening it fresh, it'll update the search index, all right? So um, that is my parts uh, demo parts database. Um, I can close out of this dialogue for now. And I do want to take a moment to just jump back in here into the SQL Server Management Studio tools. And at the moment, I can't see my database. I, I need to refresh. I'm not an uh, expert with this, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it again but I want to show you what that looks like. Uh, and right now I won't need uh, admin rights to do this because I won't be modifying anything. All right, I'm going to say connect. And when I bring it up, there is our ESS part 001. That's our ePlan uh, demo parts database. So you can have um, <clears throat> more than one of these uh, uh, or, or just one. It's up to you. It's a decision you need to make internally but certainly when uh, you first get going with ePlan it's very common to have you know multiple databases especially if you're going to use any power tools like you're going to import a, an excel spreadsheet and update a bunch of stuff oh before you do any of that make a backup of your database to protect it before you experiment with any tool that can import data you want to take every precaution to protect this data ePlan has a few of these power tools, and with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, that concludes this video. That's how you configure SQL Server Express to work on a workstation, and that's how you configure ePlan to work with SQL Server Express. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you'll return to see my next video. If you're looking for help with your next ePlan project, please contact us here at multilinedesigns.com, your independent ePlan specialists.